back to the channel guys. Today I'm going to be doing a walkthrough on my Turbo LS Swapped S10 and I got quite a bit to go over so I'm just going to dive right into it. So first things first we got the 6.0 LY6 engine. It's a stock bottom end engine. I did cap the ring so I do have 799 heads on there. I have the sloppy stage 2 cam. I have the valve springs trunnion upgrade all that good stuff all the valve train upgrades i also have the stock head bolts yet i do have two passenger side valve covers so i'd have an oil cap on both sides because i ran my breather out of both oil caps i just drilled a hole through the oil cap put an an bung in it and got the good jb weld in there i think it's rated to like 2000 degrees so that's the way my breather is set up Right back there, it goes across the back. This one goes back here, and there is my eBay or then Amazon special catch can. I'm not even sure. The turbo kit I built myself. Uh, well, I kind of bought it, but I also kind of built it. This is the uh, eBay headers. I think they're like around a hundred dollars off eBay. Um, they're LS swap headers, and. Uh, I had these when I was still NA, so I kept the driver's side one and I welded a V-band on the bottom and I made a crossover to go over to the passenger side where I have a Huron Speed T6 Silverado turbo manifold. It clears the stock control arm just fine. It clears everything besides the inner fender, which if I would Put the wastegate somewhere else maybe weld it on here it would be just fine i do have a 60 millimeter wastegate and a 50 millimeter blow off valve and as you guys probably noticed already i am non-intercooled i do have plans to change that uh right over here actually i do have an intercooler sitting ready to put it in but as of right now i'm running it non-intercooled i actually I've been running it non-intercooled for like a year now. And uh, I have fresh air, so my intake temps didn't get too hot. I have seen my intake temps come up to like 180 on a 40 to 140 pull or something like that. But it hasn't gotten too bad. This turbo does stick out of the hood. I'll put a picture up of the truck with the hood on with the turbo cut out on it and everything. And uh, I also wanted to mention that if there was an intercooler, this would be clocked downwards, then the hole in the hood would be a lot smaller because the hole comes, starts like right here, then comes up and goes around this, and kind of like that. I also wanted to point out that right down here, some of this could be cut, and this pipe could be made shorter to put the turbo a little bit further down, and that would uh, keep the turbo under the hood. And if you were to put the wastegate maybe on the side of the turbine housing, you could probably get away with not having to cut anything to make it work. I might try that this winter, I don't know. Um, I do have the stock V643 radiator in here, tucked back into the core support, and the Dodge Intrepid or Chrysler 300, I'm not even sure what it is electric fans on here this is originally a 2.2 four-cylinder truck so i do still have the stock throttle cable from the truck so that works just fine with the ebay throttle body i do have all the stock truck accessories as far as water pump power steering all that stuff i have no heat or ac as you guys probably noticed I do have the Hooker Black Heart steering shaft, clears the headers. I did not have to clearance any of the headers. It works great with the eBay headers. I have a Motion Raceworks manual brake kit with a Willwood proportioning valve. It has a brake switch on it. I have eBay engine mounts on here. I don't have a link to them. I don't know who who the seller was. I do know that I had to put washers between the frame and the engine mount to get them to fit. I did notch my cross member though. I was originally going to use a truck oil pan instead of the muscle car oil pan that I am using now. 
So I tried to clearance everything for that, but it was, it just fit too tight for me. So I uh, took the engine back out, put a muscle car oil pan on it. And now I can pull the engine and transmission together. And uh, this has a 4L80 transmission. I had to massage the transmission tunnel a couple places and cut the ears off the transmission. Actually, I have my old transmission over here. I can show you what I had to cut off. I had to cut this right here off the transmission. And uh, right here, I had to cut this off as well. That's all I had to cut off the transmission. I did have to massage the transmission tunnel. I do have a Hooker Blackheart transmission cross member which they fit great, they bolt right in, no problems. They are a little heavy if you're trying to go for an all-out race truck. So just thought I'd let you guys know, but they work great, they are sturdy, they do the job. I also have a Circle D single disc lockup torque converter in my transmission. It is spec for this setup. I have the Transco shift kit in the transmission. And other than that, transmission is stock out of a van, 2500 or 3500. This is actually my second transmission. The first one, I blew, I guess it started slipping or something, I don't know. And this was a bone stock transmission, and I tore it completely apart. And did not feel like rebuilding it, so I bought this one, bought a shift kit. This one was out of a junkyard as well. And it had stickers on it, said remanufactured by GM. It still, still looked fairly new. So I went through the entire transmission, put a shift kit in it, you know, so it has dual fed direct clutches and just some of the random stuff to keep it alive longer. And that's all that's done to the transmission. I have a custom drive shaft built by one of the drive shaft shops close to me. And uh, also, I think this is one of the things that I am asked about the most is my radiator hoses. The bottom one is out of the Silverado, I think. The top one is this part is out of a Silverado. And this usually is longer. I just cut that down here and cut this here. And I got a splice from the hardware store and I drilled and tapped it. This is my steam port vent that goes right in there. I did not want to put it on the water pump. That way, if my water pump ever fails, I don't have to drill and tap it, especially if I'm out of the road or something like that. This piece of the hose, I just went to O'Reilly's and the guys there kind of know me and I don't think they have to know you to let you back to uh, check out the radiator hoses I think you could just ask them hey can I go back and check out your radiator hoses and they'll let you anyway I found two hoses that I thought might work so I brought them home and uh, test fitted both of them or mocked them up kind of and I cut one of them down and I returned the other one so I have the new new body style intake I have a LSA map sensor so it's like two and a half bar it goes to like 25 or 26 psi I believe I do have the Bosch 210 injectors s480 turbo I do have a dome pressure sensor and a four port Mac valve to control my boosts everything is controlled by my Holly Terminator X max which is right right in here in my glove box I just have it right there laying on the bottom the wires go out the bottom of the glove box behind the dash the interior is still stock I have a stock dash and it's extremely dirty in here I did take the speakers out since the radio didn't work when I got the truck I still have the dash speakers in it I have manual locks and uh, crank windows I have a bench seat. Right over here is my Terminator screen. 
right here I do have my two-step button coming out of there and my USB for my terminator I do have 5% tint on the rear and door windows and 35% on the windshield my wheels are off a of Corvette some of you guys probably noticed that already got those custom rusted out Michigan rockers and cap corners this does not have any spacers this is a 18 inch wheel I think it's nine and a half or ten and a half this one's 17 and it's like an inch narrower than the rear one I'm not sure how wide they are exactly this is a 4 to 8 8 in the rear out of a 02 Explorer and it is not narrowed I did redrill the bolt pattern to a GM five by four and three quarter bolt pattern i have a video of that on my channel if you guys want to check that out um, it sits nice and flush i have 305 40 r18s on the rear these are nt triple five r2s the fronts are nt triple five g2s and they're 255 50 R17s. And on the front, I do have a two and a half inch spacer. I do have the Blazer big brake upgrade, I guess you could call it. Those of you who don't know what the Blazer big brakes are, some of the Blazers, maybe some of the S10s, I don't know. Some of the more sporty ones would have come with a dual piston brake caliper instead of a single piston. And Basically what I did, I bought a two inch lowering spindle for that specific blazer and then brakes for that as well. And with that, I have the front lowered two inches and I have the brake upgrade in the front. And those puppies have gotten pretty hot. Also, right in there is my wastegate. As you guys can see, it clears the tires. Front is lowered two inches and the rear is lowered three inches with lowering leaf springs. I do have Caltrax under there too. But yeah, the Ford 8.8 .8 bolts right into the back. I do have my battery relocated to the bed. I have a 15 gallon fuel cell. Here is my uh, vent. This was supposed to be like a temporary job, but hasn't done me wrong. I do have these custom 60 pound bags of sand zip tied to the back for extra traction. I have a cutoff switch. My fuel system is basically the 15 gallon fuel tank. I have, I just run E85. I have a 380 liter per hour summer racing fuel pump right inside the frame rail. It has a pre-filter, post-filter and it has 10 an ran to the fuel pump and then 8 an from there up to here in the engine bay which it comes in here goes back there crosses over comes into this regulator and returns out of the bottom to a dash six fuel line and goes back into the tank this is just a regulator off summit racing i believe this fuel pressure regulator is supposed to have a fitting right in here and I lost that fitting. That fitting will hook up to your vacuum slash boost lines and it will keep the fuel pressure one to one with boost. And yeah, I lost that. My fuel pressure drops like crazy, probably because I need a bigger pump or add a pump as well. Also, I do have a mini spool in this Ford 8.8. Um, right back here, I have my transmission cooler right under there. I think that's it. I think I covered everything. And uh, yeah, I want to thank you guys for watching and subscribing. I just hit a thousand subscribers and uh, I want to thank you guys for that. And yeah, I think that's it. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one.